Hello lamp fans, this week is, uh, this is actually the second video. Uh, the first one I had in the tripod and shot everything and did everything in front of the camera to find out that somehow the button did not get pushed down all the way. So I'm doing a reshoot on this. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, or, a week, or a week and a half ago, I got these two lamps. Um, and I just picked this one up last week as well too. So I wanna go over these lamps that I got and I guess I have the dog here wants to check out what I'm doing. But uh, anyway, uh, I have this uh, white moonstone Corinthian. Uh, now it had a butchered burner on it. I didn't buy it. The burner I kind of threw into a pile. It's nothing salvageable on it. Uh, it was electrified and totally butchered. It might be good for somebody who wants to put it on a, a lamp. But anyway, so I got this and it has most of the original um, nickel finish on it. And uh, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, it probably needs to be cleaned up underneath a little bit. It's got some adhesive that's kind of dripping down, but I can clean that up. I think somebody re-glued it. So anyway, it doesn't have a chip on it. It's perfect. And I found this matching nickel burner with just the right patina on it, a little bit wear mark. So these two go together really well. It looks like it's always been there. Um, then the other one was this Bradley and Hubbard lamp. So um, this was kind of a mix match when I got it, uh, you know, married parts once again. So um, it is a Bradley and Hubbard and you can sort of tell by a couple of things. So I'm just gonna flip this guy upside down. One is on the bottom, there's a Bradley and Hubbard number and I'm not sure what that says, 208 or 288 or 286 or 200, it's hard to see. Anyway, this is all original finish. Uh, the bottom is cast, uh, cast iron, and uh, it would have a, this flash uh, brass coating on it. So what they would do is they would copper it first and then apply the brass. I've seen this base on a few other lamps before, and this would date to late 1890s to about 1905. And the only thing I did was I popped out two dents out of the font. So the whole thing does come apart. Uh, there was that nut at the bottom. Then there's this cast iron piece, and it was painted gold. So I just stripped it, hit it with some bronze coating stuff just to clean it up. And there's a tin pot inside, I left that alone. So this I just cleaned up. Um, the pot itself has a little dent right there. It's in a tricky spot, so I'm gonna leave it for now. Um, and it came with the, oops, the wrong flame spreader. So it came with this Columbia flame spreader. So it's kind of a, I don't say this is a transitional lamp, but this is a Bradley and Hubbard and this burner style um, is a rail style, a uh, large rail from about 1905. So you sort of get that idea from, you know, Bill's book here, Center Graph Car Kerosene Lamps, uh, gives you an idea, you know, what era it came around 1904, probably came with that flame spreader, not this Columbia one. So I, I'm just gonna pull this out. So I do have a spare one that I have, wash the wick, and reinstalled it and it's pretty much good to go uh this is a bit you know hacked up but eventually i'll find one to replace it now i got this columbia flame spreader so for the for the price i paid for the lamp um which was what the flame spreader is worth so i go take a look at it and it says the new columbia lamp so going back to bill's book here go to the index in the back um and it says go to page 214 and it's Matthew and Willard's company. So this would date from about 1890. So Matthews and Willard was around for, uh, according to this, 1890 to 1903. So anyway, so I got this. So now I'm on the hunt for one of these lamps to put that part in. So that's the fun of lamp collecting. So anyway, this is pretty much ready to go. Uh, the wick needs to be trimmed and charred. Um, I have the chimney in the other room for it and it's good to go. Now I got this new Moonst uh, Moonstone Aladdin here. And uh, I bought it off a lady who bought it in, I guess, 2004 from the guy here in Ontario. I have the bill of sale and everything for it. And it came with some spare parts and I desperately need the spare parts because I resell those. And right now with the borders closed, I can't get any more. So I'm running low on common stuff. So anyway, I, I got the lamp. It, it had a chimney on it uh, and the mantle in the chimney and I took it off right away. And then I took this apart and this was completely green um, to the point, well, here's the original one. And it was so green in here, I wanted to shoot a video of how to fix a stuck wick. So essentially what I did was I removed this and 
I removed the burner and I literally peeled it like a banana with a pair of needle nose because this thing was stuck. This, this center tube was green. So when um, kerosene gets old and dries out, it gets this green fungus and funky smell. And that's the first thing I do, I get rid of that. So this, I just threw the whole thing into the, uh, into my, I got an ultrasonic cleaner and I use crud cutter in that with water and it works really well. But I noticed that the wick, well, I'm, I sh in the other video I, I showed this wick, it was burning very, very, very unevenly. So you could count the number of holes down on one side and count up on the other. So it was crooked. And then I looked really close at it. And this is the piece, this is the, let's see if I can do this with, sorry, I'm gonna have to get a little off the camera here. But this is what it was. Um, the flame spreader was crooked and it was green, solid green. So I don't think it was sold that way. There's no way it got sold that way, but somewhere along the line, the part got hit, bumped or dropped. I don't know how. And if you take a look, it's actually loose and I can go, bam. So that's gonna cause it to burn completely crooked, make the lamp completely useless. So needless to say, I don't think this lady was very happy with the lamp. And, you know, it might've been sold like that. I doubt it. Uh, quality control was there. But anyway, I had one off another one, uh, same, uh, same type, same everything. So I just threw that one. And this one, I'm just keeping around for the heck of it. Uh, I'm not even gonna fix it. I don't know if it's fixable. I don't know if solder is gonna take that heat there. Uh, so it's, it's just gonna be in my, you know, hey, things to watch for drawer. But anyway, so uh, I just put it all back together and this is the new Moonstone. So it's definitely more uh, paler than the 1938 batches that they came up with. So this is more of a pastel -y color, very nice lamp. Uh, it's gonna look, present very well with the other lamps just for a comparison for a Genie 323. So anyway, I hope this uh, helps you out um, with your lamps. Big thing is pull these old wicks off, throw them out. There's that center reinforcement tube that usually bonds straight onto here. So after the, um, uh, the, uh, the cleaning process, I just use my polishing and polish this nice. So I don't think I'll put a new wick in it right now, but one day I could. But that's the, that's the trick. Start with fresh wicks, start with fresh fuel, start with fresh everything, and your, your lamp will run much better. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this week's video, and uh, have yourselves a great day.